roster is saying, all right, remove Julio for a minute. You, you need Julio to be that guy and take the next step over what he was last year. Who do you think the most consequential player or players, if you want to go pitcher and position player if you wanted, or just one player outside of Julio is? Meaning, who's that guy that you look at and say, man, if this guy doesn't have a good, a typical year of of his uh, caliber, what he's normally doing or better, this team could have a problem. Yeah, it's interesting. We talked about this right before we started the show today, and you said, uh, you know, you, you – you put this question to me and say, hey, this is something I want to talk about. And straight away I said, oh, Julio Rodriguez. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Not the obvious. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, you're well. like, what an easy question. Why would you ask me that? It's Julio. I'm like, no, 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 no. We know Julio. It's we- got to be outside of, other than Julio. And you guys, again, can text in on this. 866-979-3776. Powered by Mac and Jack's Brewing Company. You remove Julio. That's the obvious. Aside from him, who's the player you look at and say, man, if so-and-so doesn't, play up to the yeah. back of their baseball card, the, it, it could be really impactful to this team in a bad way. All right, so I'm going to go a pitcher. I'm going to go a position player. First of all, I think the the backbone of this team is that rotation. I know Julio is a superstar. He's on Sports Illustrated. I get it. But this rotation is, in my opinion, I think top five in Major League Baseball. I think with obviously the guy at the top, Luis Castillo, mm-hmm. okay, the guy right behind him, Robbie Ray, he has to have a good year for a couple of reasons. Number one, first of all, he's in the second year of a five-year deal. You don't mm. want to start seeing, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the, the cracks start in the show where you're like, oh, man, did we overpay for this guy? You know, because last year there was a little bit of a rocky road, especially for him early in the season. Remember, he couldn't get out of that big inning. Yeah. The other thing it does, too, is it puts more pressure on the two young players, George Kirby and Logan Gilbert. Those two guys, as good as they were last year, they're still going to be that feel of, okay, hmm, Pitch, not not so much, you know, pitch and inning restrictions, but how much can you push these guys? George Kirby, this is only his second year of six months of adrenaline-filled baseball, right? I right. get it. He pitched last year, pitched in some big moments, but really only half a year. Logan Gilbert, he's still young as well. You still, you know, you're going to get some some good stuff out of him. You know, ESPN, I think they put him in the top 100 potentially or close to. Kirby, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so George Kirby. and then you got He was Logan. third of their five. Yeah, and then you have Logan Gilbert on top of that. So Robbie Ray, he's that veteran, the guy who he came in before last year that you know had the world on his shoulders, big deal, Cy Young Award winner. He has to put up some numbers because let's say he doesn't, you're putting a lot of stress on the two young pitchers, and then you, you, you're going with Luis Castillo, and we don't quite know what we're going to get Marco Gonzalez was this year. Yeah, it's and we'll talk about Marco coming up in the show. Uh, I wouldn't position player, and it could be a couple of different guys. I don't know that there's a true wrong answer unless you're telling me that if Tommy Lastella doesn't have a huge year, they've got no chance. Okay, then you've wrong answer. Uh, Ty, <laughs> Ty France, I, I think he needs to be first half Ty France, pre-injury. I mean, you, you saw how it impacted the lineup a bit. This was a team that had a hard time scoring runs as it was, and they really had a hard time bringing runners in. They led the league in, in runners left on base for a very good part of the season. And he, he's such a huge bat. He's not he's not the the loud guy. He's not the home runs and these prodigious shots and everything. He's just Mr. Consistent, uses the entire field. You just you're almost surprised when he doesn't come up with a, at least one hit a game. Like he should have a hundred and sixty two game hitting streak. That's how yeah. that's how I feel about Ty France. And and he obviously got hurt and we we talked to him out in spring training and he had talked about, you know, when he hurt his He hurt his elbow. He also hurt his wrist at the same time and that he was up there sort of, you know, tinkering with his mechanics to avoid the pain. He's like, I was, I could swing the bat and I could play, but I altered my mechanics. So, oh, if I swing like this, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Well, that screwed him up. And we saw him chasing. We saw him, we saw him expand that strike zone in a way we had not seen since he's been here. That's been his calling card is, man, this guy doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. That guy doesn't chase. That guy makes you pitch to him and he uses the entire field. So we. We saw a really different version of him for obvious reasons. But you saw what it did to the line. For sure. Much like the rotation, puts more pressure on the guys behind him. The other guys, you know, whether it's J.P. Crawford or some of the young guys in the line, what have you, it's just more pressure when you're counting on that guy who's arguably your most consistent hitter in terms of, you know, just coming up with with the hit. He's not he's not the power guy like we talked about, but Ty France has got to be Ty France. Yeah, you're right. And, and for a couple of reasons, you, too, you mentioned – when he was pressing, he was injured. It was so obvious. I mean, you, you mentioned the fact he started getting a little bit more desperate on some of the pitch selection, and it changes everything too. You, you mentioned 
the 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 energy. This is a guy who, in the clubhouse as well. Well, you see it, man. When you get to the field you know, in the afternoon, and all of a sudden, Ty France has got his head down. He's not the same kind of clubhouse presence. Or after the game, it does have that that effect on it, on everyone around him too. I, I, so I'm going to go the same on position player wise. I'm going to go with Gino Suarez for similar reasons. You mentioned some of the situations early on in the season. You talk about left on base. I mean, the month of June, and this is where Eugenio, that first half, was really trying to figure it out. He came mm-hmm. up in some big spots. Like for example, you talked about the team left on base 256. Oh no, excuse me, 224 runners left on base crazy that would put up some big numbers in big you know some big not so good numbers in big situations and Gino was that guy that early on in the season all of a sudden August September he started hitting the ball out of, out of the park he started turning on late his energy went through the roof the team just kind of caught that wind so I think him in the similar vein as Ty France for the energy he brings, where he is in, in the lineup, the pressure puts on everyone else, especially once you get past Gino, we know about the bottom of that lineup, Yeah, what to expect. So he's my pick outside. Obviously, we're taking Julio Rodriguez out of this. I want to make yeah, that clear. Yeah.